You ever look at a community surrounding a game and wonder if they're the ones responsible for the weird decisions that take place throughout a series? One of the problems that Kingdom Hearts has faced over the years is community perception regarding its own gameplay. It's not uncommon for even people playing on the hardest difficulty setting to label the series a brainless button masher. It was critically received that way, there are tons of YouTube videos labeling it as such. The stigma is so pronounced you could be forgiven for thinking that someone swapped the disc out with Dynasty Warriors when most of YouTube wasn't looking. As a result of this perception, every single game since the first Kingdom Hearts has had to design itself around breaking the players of these habits. Some succeeded, some failed, one blew it out of the park. Chain of Memories started this trend by introducing the card-based battle system, encouraging the player to think about what they were playing. Of course, as we discussed in the Legacy of Kingdom Hearts, the ability to spam, slights, and abuse item cards to get previously lost cards back destroyed any idea of a more thoughtful approach to gameplay. Yeah, Chain of Memories still fucking sucks. So Kingdom Hearts 2 designed a lot, and I do mean a lot, of new abilities. Not only combo modifiers and new magic commands, but multiple drive forms, multiple limits for every potential party member, summons returning from the first Kingdom Hearts, and just for good measure, a few abilities that act as honeypots designed to punish you for not paying attention to what you're equipping. Oh, Dodge Slash, why do you hurt me this way? There was just one big, glaring, gaping black hole of a problem. The game made absolutely zero effort to teach the player about the nuances of its own mechanics, and for most of the game on beginner or normal mode, the old foo strategy of mashing X and triangle would serve you pretty well. Even on proud mode, that strategy was still rather viable. Until around the middle of the game. Once you reach the heartless attack on Hollow Bastion, you're introduced to the game's first cockblock boss. Demix. Demix is designed to explicitly punish the player for trying to mindlessly mash the X button at him. Not only from the fight starting with a mechanic that demands that you pay attention to what you're actually doing and how Sora's reaction commands interact with the enemies, but also from Demix's attacks being high cleave, high movement spellcasting. Because Demix's attacks almost all take the form of water pillars or bubbles, you can't break his attack just by hitting him. Touching these pillars in any way will register a hit on Sora. You either have to be crafty and dodge in such a way that you'll be close enough to Demix to hit him after his attacks end, or or induce a stagger with a well-timed thunder spell, or you can hit him with limit attacks, Nox Smash in particular being extremely effective against him. Demix is a boss specifically designed to inoculate the player against bad habits, and he would have done that extremely well if he had been introduced earlier in the game. In reality, anybody familiar with Kingdom Hearts 2 will know Demix as that one boss that many players struggle with because they're already too far into the game to reliably kick those bad habits. And even after Demix has been defeated, most bosses afterward can still be reliably handled by button mashing because they were designed with the intention that you would have already had that habit broken, and as such weren't deliberately designed to counter that strategy. This isn't helped by the fact that the revenge value system heavily favors and rewards button mashing. The ability to stagger bosses through multiple multiple combos is extremely attractive to the idea of just spamming physical combos over and over again until the enemy breaks out. And in the eyes of most players, the idea that staggering has a limit just flat out doesn't come to mind. I myself was unaware that revenge value was even a thing until I read about it. It isn't until you reach the data battles in Final Mix that every boss is immune to mindlessly flailing, and that's due to them all ignoring Sora's defense stat with primarily elemental attacks and crunching you to 1 HP with almost every hit. So if you haven't learned the non-button mashing methods of playing by this point, you are going to hit a wall. This, I feel, is what led to the command deck system in Birth by Sleep and Dream Drop Distance. People often don't quite recognize this, but in a series of extremely similar games, design decisions can come directly from addressing problems found in the previous game. For example, Cure using up all of your MP could be seen as a response from the developers to players in Kingdom Hearts 1 abusing Cure and Leaf Bracer to cheese through most of the fights. And the command deck system can be seen as another attempt to wean players off button mashing. Whereas Kingdom Hearts 2 introduced a few bosses and made them extremely susceptible to the non-X button tools in Sora's arsenal, Birth by Sleep just flat out hard nerfed physical combos and designed bosses against spamming the attack command. So combo modifiers, they're gone. The revenge value system, that's also gone. You try and spam the X button, your ass is getting countered. They tried to wean you off it and it didn't work, so now they're just going to pound your face into the dirt if you pull that shit. One boss in particular, Venetus, actively insults you for doing it right before he counters you. Thunder! Pathetic. Fire! Too slow. Too slow. 
Bosses still stagger, but they don't stagger for three full combos anymore, and since now that they can only take a few hits before countering, you're shunted into making use of the command deck and experimenting with the different commands you can use. Not only that, but your basic combo isn't nearly as smooth and responsive as it was in Kingdom Hearts 2. It's got this sluggish and deliberate pause between each swing, and your swings are rather wide and deliberately slow, with finishers themselves having cooldown lag. So in Birth by Sleep, they nailed weaning the player off button mashing. And then they fucked it up again. Once again, the introduction boss for this idea, Venetus, doesn't come until the middle of the game. Hell, if you pick Terra to start with, he doesn't show up until a dual battle with Xehanort at the very end. Venetus is intended to introduce you to the idea of human-sized bosses not being staggered because the first bosses you encounter before this point are large monsters that have historically never been staggered in any Kingdom Hearts game. The fact that Venetus teleports above you and insults you is evident of his design as a tutorial boss, but as you're probably already aware, Community Perception has dubbed Venetus a horrible boss because they can't stagger him into oblivion, which means that players are quickly looking for the path of least resistance, and so they exploit programming mistakes to win, starting with the fact that Aqua and Ventus have full invincibility while dodging, which means Terra is immediately derided as being useless because his dodges have cooldown lag like in Kingdom Hearts 2. It also means that any ability that does AoE damage or gives you invincibility frames is immediately jumped onto as being the best abilities, and therefore everything else is dog shit, and using anything else is handicapping yourself. Now that's never actually been true, and even fighting the mysterious figure with Terra without abusing surges is possible, but you have to actually be good at the game to do it, something I am not. And when faced with the choice between learning how to play the game and exploiting invincibility frames, most players opted for the latter because it's just easier, and most guides will tell you to stack all the thunder surges and mash square at all times, never actually interacting with any of the game's mechanics, and instead no clipping through it. So moving on to Dream Drop Distance, were these problems fixed? Yes and no. The first big change is flat out removing invincibility frames from anything that isn't a dodge. There are very few attacks that you cannot be knocked out of, so crap like Thunder Surge just doesn't work anymore, and Flow Motion does not make you invincible either. In fact, the only reliable trick for invincibility are the limits that Sora can do with his Dream Eaters, something Riku just flat out doesn't have access to. There's Balloon, serving the same purpose that Mind Square served from Birth by Sleep, but it's somewhat mitigated by the fact that it's called Balloon, and as a result you just don't want to try it. I had already beaten every optional boss on critical mode before I'd even learned that Balloon was as powerful as it was, so without even realizing it I'd proven that Balloon was not the end all and be all. But it's still there, and now you know about it because I just told you. But did they fix the problem of cockblock bosses coming too late in the game to be of any use? Fucking yeah they did, holy shit! Everyone, meet Wargoyle! This beautifully designed boss is a high mobility fight that encourages dodging, discourages you from retreating too heavily, has a brief stagger period to get in some heavy damage, but punishes you if you get too greedy and whose moves actually evolve and power up in the last phase to force you to rethink how you deal with his abilities mid-fight. So when does this masterpiece appear? In the first world you go to after Traverse Town. Wargoyle is the first proper boss in the game, and he is going to literally beat those old habits out of you. Not only that, but he reappears midway through the game just to make sure you haven't fallen back into old habits while he was gone, and you can fight an even stronger version of him as an optional super boss late in the game. Wargoyle even reuses concepts from Demix, attacking primarily with magical effects and extended limbs that will always register a hit on Sora if he tries to mindlessly attack through them, and making use of long duration area of effect attacks that all say, no, you can't attack through this, use your head. This is what Demix and Venetus should have been, an early game boss that forces the player to think more strategically about how they approach combat. Of course, Wargoyle is still that one boss for players who really refuse to let go of the idea that Kingdom Hearts is just a hack and slash game, but this time, it really is the player's fault and not the developer's. If you go into Dream Drop Distance expecting it to be Dynasty Warriors, this rainbow candy fruit bat is going to pummel you like your Richard Spencer. Wargoyle is the prime example of amazing boss design. It has actual mechanics that ask you to engage your brain and figure out how to deal with it, rather than just memorizing frame-perfect timings and forcing in invincibility frames without being clever with the mechanics. Hello, Lingering Will, and all of the Soulsborne games! But also in the sense of inoculating the player against habits that will only frustrate them later in the game. Because Square knows that the community perception of press X to win always causes players to hit a wall at some point, and as such, not enjoy the game as much as they could be enjoying it. And it's good that they 
saw this as a problem with the game's design and have been working to fix it. Sometimes their fixes created more problems, but those problems were themselves fixed in later games. Dream Drop Distance did not repeat Birth by Sleep's mistake of having commands that give you invincibility frames, and I can only assume that Kingdom Hearts 3 isn't going to repeat Dream Drop Distance's mistake of letting the player cast an overly convenient spell over and over and over again. Instead, it'll make its own mistakes to write insufferable thing pieces about. Kingdom Hearts 3 is supposedly returning to Kingdom Hearts 2's system of combo modifiers along with bringing back the shot locks from Birth by Sleep and adding in more tertiary mechanics like attraction flow. And while that could be potentially problematic, hopefully they'll know to head it off with early game bosses that don't let you get away with just mindlessly mashing the X button and forces the player to make use of those tools and overall just have a more enjoyable time. If Square Enix does their job correctly, only the first or second boss in the game will be that one boss. See ya!